expressing a gratitude uh, to the uh, organizers of, of this conference. And I'd like, uh, it's a big honor for me to take part in this event. So the broad theme of my uh, research is, um, uh, I'd like to share my presentation with you. Uh, the, the broad theme of my research um, is uh, the impact of the United States social, political, uh, and um, cultural milieu on the religious life of Orthodox Greek uh, Americans. So can you see my PowerPoint now? Yeah, it's uh, Today I'd like to talk about just one segment of this uh, broad issue, traits uh, of Americanization in the grassroots opposition movement uh, inside the Greek Orthodox Archdiocese in the 1990s-2000. Uh, a major participant of this uh, movement was the organization Orthodox Christian uh, Deity, uh, which um, advocated for a non-ethnic united autocephalous English-speaking orthodoxy compatible with uh, the cultural and socio-political um, ethos of the United States. It advocated for a more democratic American church in which laymen and priests uh, would have a stronger say. Uh, according to, to uh, Alexander Kitroyev, uh, the ideas of um, o, uh, the OCL represented an acceleration of the trend toward Americanization that had swept through the Archdiocese since the 1970s. Uh, the OCL was involved in the strife inside the Greek uh, Archdiocese in the 1990s uh, related to the resign of Archbishop Iakovos and then uh, the mobilization against Archbishop Spiridon. Uh, a large portion of, the cl of clergy and laity uh, criticized, uh, openly criticized both the Archdiocese and Constantinople uh, for um, alleged imposing of the uh, diaspora mindset. Uh, on the church in the United States, as well as for the uh, attempts to reverse Americanization uh, in the Greek American church. Archbishop Spiridon was criticized, for example, uh, for speaking uh, Greek instead of English uh, to the flock and for uh, autocratic style, which is okay in the old world, um, orthodoxy, but not in the United States. Uh, in uh, the view of Dean Pops, a prominent uh, Greek Archdiocese layman. The conflict uh, between Spiridon and his critics was uh, an East versus West conflict. Uh, so what are the, the most remarkable traits of Americanization uh, in the ideas uh, and strategy of the uh, Orthodox Christian laity movement? Uh, to study them, I uh, analyzed writings by George Matsukas, one of the most prominent, uh, one of the OCL leaders and program documents uh, of this organization, Orthodox Christian Laity. Uh, one of the key ideas of the, uh, uh, is uh, the fundamental difference between uh, of orthodoxy in America from uh, orthodoxy in the old world. And uh, this difference is the result of the influence uh, of the US liberal uh, democratic pluralistic ethos as opposed uh, to the culture of, uh, here I quote, the culture of repression, end of quote, uh, in certain European and Middle Eastern countries, internalized by the Orthodox Church there. Uh, in America, the faithful are living in the context of choice, quote, it's the quotation, and hierarchy should not use despotic methods of um, administration in the American church. The Americanized faithful wanted compliance with parliamentary uh, principles uh, in the church uh, management, uh, more lay control of, of, of church finances, uh, more grassroots participation in the selection of bishops. Uh, Matsukos also reckons Americanized church structure with more democracy and more lay participation as uh, the most consistent with the ancient uh, church tradition of conciliarity. It was claimed that um, the Archdiocese under the leadership of Archbishop Spiridon ignored the norms of accountability, conciliar and synodical process, academic freedom, uh, decisions of clergy laity conferences. Uh, so uh, disrespect of the American democratic values uh, was viewed 
as equal to the disrespect of uh, the traditional church norms of conciliarity. Uh, Americanized uh, Greek Orthodox embraced the US pattern of uh, church-state relations and uh, consider it as the most preferable for uh, the Orthodox Church. One of the OCL um, publications exalts the genius of the founding fathers and affirms that in America, the church enjoys total freedom uh, from any secular leader of the government, unlike in traditional uh, Orthodox countries. And just because Orthodox in America is not, uh, is not a state-sponsored uh, church, it is the laity who uh, pay uh, the bill and the laity have the right to govern the church uh, through the parliamentary uh, procedures. Uh, one of the um, a curious impact of Americanization could be seen in the fact that clergy and laity rely uh, on secular courts, secular justice to deal with what they consider power abuse of the hierarchy. Uh, in 1994, Simon Dimas, a member of the OCL, filed lawsuit against um, the Archdiocese because of a church property transaction made by the Archdiocese in 1986, which allegedly resulted in the loss of millions of dollars in church funds. Another example, in 2003-2004, uh, a group of laity protested against the new charter of, of the Archdiocese, uh, which, as they insisted, failed to provide for participation of American par uh, parishioners in selecting uh, archbishops and in other matters. Uh, the OCL group, uh, an OCL group uh, filed the lawsuit to the Supreme Court of the State of New York um, so that the court should suspend uh, the new charter of the Archdiocese. The OCL claimed that the charter had been improperly uh, adopted in violation of, of state corporate law. Uh, the Americanized Orthodox were comfortable in and very proud of the United States legal and socio-political system, and they demanded that, uh, that their church should comply with it. Uh, George Matsukas expressed remarkable, uh, remarkable points of uh, view regarding uh, old calendar issue and monasticism. Uh, he was strongly against um, the old calendar just because it is un-American, alien to orthodoxy in the American cultural um, context. In 1999, he, uh, he raised a strong objection against the attempts uh, to, uh, of Patriarch Bartol Bartholomew and Archbishop Spiridon to bring the old calendar flock in America under the jurisdiction of the Ecumenical Patriarchate. Uh, an even more curious point is that uh, Matsukas questioned the necessity of monasticism in uh, North America, um, uh, in orthodoxy of North America, he expressed some mistrust of monasticism. Uh, in 1999, he raised objections against establishing of new monasteries uh, in the US. Uh, Matsukas uh, viewed mon uh, monasteries as a threat to the influence of parish priests and laity in the church. Uh, here I quote, are these new monasteries being built uh, to, to destabilize our parishes? Another quotation, monasteries that are not able, uh, open to faithful or do not have services in English are not the answer to, uh, for, for renewal of, of our church today. Uh, American patriotism and desire to um, make uh, an American church in, uh, independent from uh, old world patriarchates, sometimes resulted in a subversive uh, activities discourse. In 1995, Matsukas accused the Archdiocese of lobbying for foreign interests and meddling with uh, the internal uh, political affairs of the United States. Uh, in 2003, Matsukas was writing that the leaders of the, great of the Greek Archdiocese in America are foreign agents in the United States. So uh, to conclude, I'd like to say that in spite of some uh, side effects uh, I've just mentioned, for example, very rigoristic rhetoric, Americanization of orthodoxy uh, may have some answers for worldwide orthodoxy issues.
So uh, thank you for your attention and I'll be waiting for, uh, for comments and uh, questions.